guys, this is Greg Polis here with the Sports Hit List, and today we're going to discuss growing up black in baseball. And on the panel with me today are my two younger brothers, Garrison, Stefan, and our good friend Dave. Dave, Dave, Dave. What's going on, fellas? How you guys doing? Good. I'm, I'm alright. I mean, yeah. since I'm not a brother, we've been playing for years, but it's alright. <laughs> You like family, bro. You're, honor, you're honorary police. Nah, David, Polis. you hear the word, I'm like family. <laughs> nah, you big, big bro, man. you always been loved, boy. I love you guys, too. Hey. <laughs> Got right. your back, Dave. All right, fellas. Um, so we already you know, said what we're going to discuss. So before we get into the question, just tell me where you guys are from and where you reached in your respective baseball careers. Garrison? Um, I'm Garrison, little brother, little polius. Um, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Throw it up. And I got to the collegiate level of baseball, D3 Juco. Steph? Uh, Stefan. And uh, I played semi-pro for the, in the Yawkey League for the Brookline Dodgers. All right. D-train. Yep, my name is David. Don't forget <laughs> the D-Train Chestnut. I played at the collegiate level at D3. All right, so now, what I want to know from you guys, what was it like growing up black in baseball, oh. so when you detrain, well, being a large kid that I was, you know, every time you go around somebody, it's like, oh, you play football? You know, I play baseball. And you see the disappointment in their face. <laughs> but to me, baseball was a sport that made me grow and made me become the person I am today. But as you get older, as you're younger, you don't realize that the, there are not that many other players that look like you not playing. It's not until you get to that level where you're going to showcases and going to pro trials that you want a few. And it's very tough for us out here, and we got to find ways to get our players back into the game. So you said uh, that it helped you grow as a person. In what way did it help you grow? Baseball helped me, one, I was able to travel up and down the eastern seaboard by the age I was 12 on travel teams. So from all the way from Maine all the way down to North Carolina, Florida, I was able to see different type of people with different type of cultures and actually play against them too again. So it was a way of me getting exposed to the world and also playing against great competition. Cool. What about you guys? What was it like, Steph, growing up black in baseball? I mean, for me, I think I wasn't aware of like my skin color right away or like just playing ball, right? I was just having fun. Um, I think, like Dave said, not until you get up to higher levels, right, and you're seeing fewer and fewer and people that look like you, because when I was playing ball when I was young, I was playing with black, like, brown kids. Like, you know, it was just the same faces. You start to move up and play in college. Mm -hmm. You know, you start playing these, like, men's leagues, and you see less and less of, you know, yourself in the people you play with. And I think for the most part, as a player, I didn't see what the differences were. But like now as like a coach, I see like how different that is and, and the lack of access that exists for like black athletes. As like I said, when I was younger, again oblivious to it because I was just having fun. It was just fun to be on the field, to be like they said to travel. You know, I wasn't aware. And I think that uh, like gift and a curse, right? To be yeah. young and then be ignorant. But um, growing up now and being an adult and be able to try and contribute, seeing the access is the problem and trying to solve that problem. We, we're we're going to get to that, yeah. but before we get to that, Garrison, um, your take on what it was like. Um, I'd say I, I first experienced it when I got to high school, because like Steph, when I was in middle school, or like just playing before, I played with black and Latino ball players, and they all looked like me. So, you know, when I got to high school, I was the only black kid on the team, and I went to a predominantly white high school. So when, just like Dave said earlier, when, when people would ask me, you play on the baseball team? And I'd be like, yeah. Like, like, like culture shock, Exactly. Right? So, it, you know, and I dealt with that for four years on there. And even, even, if, even if you're, like, one of the better ball players on the team, Doesn't you're matter. seen as an outlier on that team because you, you, know, you don't belong. And you always feel and know you don't belong in, like, in that circle. So I would say, like, high school when I got to college and we started traveling and I, my summer team went down, to different states and we're playing ball there, that's when I started seeing all these all these other like predominantly white teams. 
you would see you would get a couple of black kids here, a Latino kid here, but for the most part, you you are you are one of very few. I mean, it it's sad, but it's true because even on you know a Division One collegiate level, where I played a couple of years, uh, my freshman year I was one of two, <laughs> and sophomore year I was one of one. But uh, so. Given all this that we just discussed, you know, the harsh reality of it, why do you guys think we're so underrepresented in this particular sport? Um, Dave? I say one thing is the actual introduction to the sport in the inner city communities. One, it's a very costly sport to play, to buy a glove, to buy proper equipment. A lot of kids in the city don't have that. A lot of parents in the inner city don't have that access cash to pay for it. Then the traveling fees actually Play like it's sometimes it's, it's almost ridiculous. Charging three and four grand, grand two years for for just a summer. So we got to find cheaper ways to introduce the sport to these kids and also help them travel. I agree. Just to go a bit further, I think even programs like Harlem RBI, you know, it's mostly volunteers. But if they were able to get some solid coaching for these guys from the ground level up, I think it'll also help. Um, what do you, why do you guys think we're so underrepresented? I would say accessibility. Like I, can, I can't speak for at least other states, but I know in New York, we don't have fields like that. You, you, you go around places, you see, you'll see a basketball court anywhere. You can put a basketball court just about everywhere. You'll see football fields. Finding a baseball field where a kid could publicly go and just play ball with his friends, or even if he's not on the team, you don't see that. Do you feel like there's more football fields than baseball fields? Absolutely. Like, cause you like, I, 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 especially in terms of like parks, you could get a sock in a football field, put it yeah. together, throw that in a park. Kids will go down there and play. To get like to get a baseball field you, and to be able to play on it, you got to jump through hoops to get permits. Like you like getting a getting a team in in a youth city to get a field alone just to be able to play, is hard. They have to they have to travel to do it. Some people can't afford to do that. And it's just a, it's a harder way to, to be in a sport where you got to do so much work. Like, you have to love it. And if these kids are playing basketball and football, that's more, that's more accessible. They could drive to the gym. Like, they get, they get these things Basketball's a lot easier. Basketball's $20. Than that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's one thing that I think, just piggybacking off of that, is I agree that the quality of the programs needs to improve, the quality of coaches, to, you know, to make these players better instead of just telling them to go run out there and play. But it also has to do with the fact that you don't, like to play baseball, again, expensive, right? When you have kids that want to get better at basketball, you go to a court, you can work in your jump shot, you can work in dribbling, like you can cross over all that by yourself. It's difficult to be a ball player and go to a field unless you have people with you to help you get better, right? And even if that is the case, right? Let's say you take a bunch of BP, you, you can be crushing in BP, right? You can have guys throwing live to you, just throwing fastballs. But that, it's only a facet, right? It's so complex, baseball is, that there's so many layers, so many facets to it, that it's tough to say that you know, you're going to go to a field and practice and, and get better at it where you have these kids that when they're young, you're playing multiple sports. So now you have the case where I'm playing baseball, kind of struggling at it, but the same kid is playing basketball or football and he's crushing at that, right? Because again, access that they have, you know, especially with the programs you have for basketball as well as football. So then for a baseball player, it's like, well, I'm going to drop that sport because it's, it's harder for me, you know, and again, expensive. So I just, I think that if we could find ways to improve mm -hmm. one the coaching but again dealing with access and like having those fields available and pushing more to like get into those intricacies and, and teach those kids at a younger age the correct way to play so to that I have uh, kind of a devil advocate point at one point do we put it on the parents when their sons just want to quit a sport that they've tried out not because they're not good but just because they, their friends aren't playing it. Like, where do you come in, and how do you feel as far as the parents' role in that? In terms of the parents, like being in industry, like you said, the affordability and the time. Think about the cost of New York City. Like, mostly, if you have both parents, and they have to work. And baseball game, the baseball is like such an intricate sport that you need time to take time. You need to take your son to the field. You need to take your son to the cages and teach him how to hit. That takes time. If both parents are working, they're going to be tired. They still got to do other things when they come home. Well, in terms of basketball and football, you can go in division and become, work out yourself. 
you could pull your phone on YouTube and find some drills in basketball and go out and shoot, dribble, and become better. But in terms of baseball, in terms in terms of baseball, you need that time and support that you ain't gonna be able to get. Just a, before, well, we gotta kind of wrap things up. So I want to get you guys' final take. Um, where do you, what do you think uh, baseball should do in terms of getting young men of color back into the sport? Short term and long term. Uh, rebranding, uh, you know, like the commercials. You know, you got to show young African American kids actually playing the sport, and enjoying it. You got to show young African American fans because they don't show it. You don't. You don't see yourself represented in the game. That's kids true. are not going to be inspired to play it. That makes sense. I think that a lot of that responsibility goes to the ball players, the black ball players we have now. Like I think they need to take a larger step into because they know the grind. They made it there, but they know that wasn't easy. Even if they were given, like if they, they came from, the, if they had a certain amount of privilege to get to that level and you know, like it wasn't a burden on their parents. Like, look look at how we grew up. We, we it, it was still a grind it for us. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's not easy. And if those ball players come out and they they, they push towards those take kids. Take ownership of yeah, them. Yeah, they, 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 they take, exactly, take ownership of them and let them know that, hey, we're here, you could be here too. And you give them a platform, like, Baseball don't got a LeBron James. Baseball don't got an MJ. Baseball don't got an Iverson. Like you, you can you, We don't. We don't have that face. We get that face. That changes a lot for us. I agree, Steph. Final thoughts. I think, like both these guys made really good points. I think another thing is just making it fun, right? I think baseball is so traditional. They're always trying to suck the fun out of it. So when you have players like Jose Reyes, some of these Dominican players, these Cuban players that are enjoying celebrating the bat flips, you know, and just having fun, baseball tells them, no, that's not the way, you're playing the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, they're losing the fan base, right? Like, you can't expect to reach the youth, these young kids that they're just looking to have a good time and enjoy something, and say, you can't celebrate, you can't have fun. It's, baseball is cut and dry, you know? The idea that these, these owners, and I mean, you can say that football and basketball is the same, but baseball is, it's, it's America's pastime, right? And all these owners want to hold on to that. They, they, they grasp onto that like it means a lot. And to these kids, it means nothing. Yeah. So making it fun, allowing for that culture to change and celebrating someone having a hitting a home run or having a big play, you know, making a big out like if you have allowing Fernando Rodney. To yes. move yes. really. but like, exactly. Right. So like Fernando Rodney after he gets a save, you know, he does a big you know, arrow, he does the ball. Like that's, that's exciting. People want that. People want that with every play. Like they want to see life in the play, see more personality. You know, we talk about Adam Jones. Robots. Yeah, you see Adam Jones and some of these other places, black players, Mookie Betts. I think they have big personalities, but when you get to the MLB, I think you have to fall in line, right? You can't be boisterous. You can't have that personality. You have to just be another cog and play the game the right way. You can't be yourself. Yeah. But yeah. that's like more of the racial disparity <coughs> in yeah. baseball. But that, that's a, another topic for mm -hmm. a different day. But I want to thank you guys for coming on. Yeah. Appreciate squaw, you. We've had some squaw, great squaw, discussions. Squaw, yeah. squaw, squaw, yeah. squaw. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> and that'll do it for us here at the Sports Hit List. Yeah.